Hey everybody, it's the Everyday Dad. Welcome back to Reviewing the Cheapest. So here on Reviewing the Cheapest, if you're new to the channel, we go out and we scour the internet for the cheapest technology, bring it here, see if it's any good. Because as technology marches along, there's a lot of tech out there that's pretty good. So what we got today is something that I did not go out and purchase specifically for this review. I've had this for a while and I realized last week, hey, that's actually the cheapest stabilized gimbal you can get. I think as we go forward as YouTube and these other platforms, Instagram, Facebook, all this video, nobody wants to see shaky video. Nobody. So what's going to happen in my mind is these stabilizers, stabilized cameras, gimbals to stabilize your existing cameras, I think they're just going to be more and more popular. So let's find out if the cheapest one you can get is worth any good. So the way I break it down here in reviewing the cheapest is I don't just find the random crap on the internet and present it to you. Though, if we're being 100% honest, some of these items have kind of turned into crap. When they're like 12 bucks, I mean, that happened. But the rules of the road are, I go to the website, this one's amazon.com, I type in what I'm looking for, stabilized gimbal, I sort price lowest to highest, I go through, there is some sub, there is some subjective qualities to this. A lot of times when you go low price, they'll give you cables, cases, stuff like that. I don't want that. I wanna bring you a stabilized gimbal. So you can see here, it was about, so I go through all that and then we end up with this stabilized gimbal which cost me $125. I actually just recently checked, that's what it still costs. So the gimbal we're talking about is the Jun, the Ji Yun, the, the Ji Yun, the Z-H-I-U-N, Smooth Q 3 axis stabilized gimbal. Now if you saw the last couple of vlogs, I talked about it because I've been trying to get some really stable shots for the vlog. So let's unbox it, get into it. It's actually pretty funny that it comes with almost nothing. <laughs> it was really easy to hold on to everything and then unbox it, because what you're gonna see is exactly what comes in the box. Let's check it out. So in this nice box, you get another box. I love boxes inside of boxes. You get the carrying case with everything you need in it. And silica gel, we love silica gel. Don't eat it though. Hey, so real quick, just so you know, whether you like this gimbal or not, I want to warn you, it stinks when you take it out of the box. Like, I normally love how new tech smells. I love how new books smell the best, right? But this thing reeks. Like, even opening this back, I'd forgotten about it until I opened this back up, this box. I opened the box back up and I was like, man, that does not smell good. I'm not trying to say that to like warn you off the product, but just be warned, when you open this up, it could potentially stink. So we'll get rid of this box. So in that box is this carrying case, and I use this carrying case at all times when using the gimbal, because gimbals are pretty fragile. It comes with the gimbal, and it comes with the charging cable. Unboxing complete. Seriously, that's all that comes with it. So now that we got the unboxing out of the way, how good is this gimbal? What does it do? So I've had this gimbal for a while now, like maybe a month or two, and I actually filmed this trailer For dad rides, which doesn't exist anymore. But I filmed that on this, which with its motion time-lapse function, I had to say that three times in a row to get one that didn't sound all screwed up. With its motion time-lapse function, uh, there's a whole bunch of cool features. We'll go through it here in just a second. Let's just start using it. It works with all sizes of phones. I'm not a big Jiyun person, but I've got an iPhone 7 Plus, one of the biggest phones out there. It holds it pretty well. So step one, you open these little clamps. You put your phone in. Step one complete. Step two is actually the most important one. So when it comes to stabilizers, you see that? You see how it's not balancing? Yeah, if I turn the power on, it could probably pull itself together, but then it's using all of its motor energy just to keep it stable. What you wanna do is you have to balance stabilizers when you use them. So on this one, you can see it right there, there's a little screw, you unscrew it, and you pull this out. You see how it's trying to balance, it's almost there. You pull this out and you just make sure, there you go, that it's balanced. Lock that back in so that it doesn't unbalance when it starts moving around. There you go. That is how you put your phone in. Now you may be asking yourself, what does a stabilizer actually do? So you can see, this is a three axis stabilizer. So it stabilizes around, up and down, 
all around. And what this should do is, and we'll turn it on in just a second, you can check it out. So what this does is this keeps your lens steady. All the shake of your hand or all the movement is all taken out by all these little moving pieces. That's why it takes a motor to make it work. So this should theoretically give you incredibly smooth footage when you're using it. So how do you turn it on? See the little record button? That is also the power button. You press and hold, the light flashes, and it turns on. So you can see it keeps the phone stable. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're looking for in a gimbal is that it takes all the shake out of the camera. It has different modes that you can, you know, turn it around, get some smooth panning shots if you want to. Go down and up. Move it all around. Now you can do all this and you don't need to connect your phone to the gimbal. It connects through Bluetooth connection and there are some other modes that you need that for but for de purposes of the actual gimbal itself demonstration, you don't need to do anything. It does a full 360 degree turn. And I think it does a pretty good job. Look at that. Switch the mode and it will now follow you where you go. You can hold it in like, I guess they call this flashlight mode. Hold it up, you can use it upside down. Let's help it get back up. There you go. It also has, we'll go through more of the buttons here. You can zoom in and out on here inside of the Jun, Jun, inside of the Gimbal's app. It also, like I said, here's the mode button and then here's the button that, here's the button that changes the, that works as a joystick. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's connect our phone to it. It connects through, like I said, Bluetooth. You have to download the app to get it to work correctly. It's called ZY Play, right there in the middle. Open it up. It works a lot like a DJI app does, where it wants you to connect your device to it. Hit connect your device. I've already done this before. It'll, it'll have you connect to the Bluetooth thing, so you gotta sync them up with Bluetooth. So we connected it, and now you can see. You see me in there. Hey. So sorry, the light's gonna be a little bad, because if the light's, the normal light's going, you're never gonna be able to see the screen, so. We'll turn the light back on in just a second. So you can see it does all the normal. Take a video, change cameras pictures or film, go to the home screen. Here's where you, so one of the big things that you gotta do when you use this app to take your video or photos, they don't save directly to your phone. You have to go into the app, you have to touch this little button, go through, you have to save the footage. Then it'll go in your photos or whatever Android has. You can change your settings, all the, you can change all the tilt, the roll, the pan options. You can see here, here are the different uh, motions I was telling you about, here's the different things. This can do slow motion, time lapse, or motion time lapse. Any camera can do time lapse, but I really like the motion time lapse setting on this. I've got a, some sample footage, but here, here's how you do motion time lapse. So I just close it and I gotta redo it. So the way motion time lapse works is, you open up motion time lapse, you click to take a picture, you move the gimbal somewhere else where you want it to end. So the first one is your starting point. This is your ending point. Take a picture and then start. You have to, it wants you to select your interval so you can do between 0.5 seconds and a lot of seconds. You can go all the way up like the interval of how often it takes a picture. You can change how long it films up to as low as 30 seconds and as great as three hours. You can choose to have it close your shutter when you're doing it. And then once you've got it all set up, you hit start. It moves to the beginning and it starts taking time lapse. You can see right here's the counter for how fast it's going, how much it has complete. And then when it's done, you've got a really sweet motion time lapse shot. It also has a bunch of settings just to change up the camera. Just pretty standard camera app kinds of things. You can change up the resolution, the brightness, the white balance. You can turn off the flash. You can add a grid. You can do all the basic camera app stuff that you'd expect from your... It also has some Instagram type filters that you can pick from. So all in all, it's a pretty bare bones gimbal platform. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but that's not, if you're going to buy a cheap gimbal, you're not really looking for something that has a bunch of bells and whistles. You're just looking for something to stabilize your footage. Does it stabilize your footage? So if you saw the dad vlogs yesterday, you know that I took this and my Sony FDR X3000 out just to compare their stabilization features. So if you know the FDRX 3000, it has built-in image stabilization. It doesn't come with a gimbal, obviously. The iPhone does have some image stabilization built into it. Let's just compare the two and see how it works. Cause that's really what, you're not buying a gimbal to have all the neat features, to have all the motion time lapses, to have all that. I mean, those are nice, but the real reason you get a gimbal is to keep stable footage. Does it keep it stable? Let's head on down to the river and see how well it works. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back. So anybody can tell you this stuff. You could see a million YouTube videos out there on gimbals and their relationship and how the iPhone deals with gimbals. If you've seen reviewing the cheapest before, you know it's coming. Should you buy it? Will I keep it? If you have an iPhone, I would tell you not to buy this gimbal. You saw in the video, there's a lot of jelloing. There's a lot of issues between the iPhone stabilization and the gimbal stabilization. They kind of counteract or enhance each other, making the image stabilization actually unstable when you combine the two. When it comes to Samsung phones, I've seen some good stuff on it, or Android phones in general. Phones that have a locked camera, I would say this would be perfect for. I think you'd be able to get really stable footage. It, if you use your phone as a primary camera, which I mainly use mine as a camera when I run out of storage on all my other things, you know what I'm talking about. If you have an iPhone, I don't think you should get this. There's too many issues. I don't think, if you have an iPhone, I don't think you should get a cell phone gimbal, period, because there's nothing that's gonna stop. It's hardwired into the iPhone that the image stabilization works. You can't turn it off completely, no matter what app you download. So no, you should not get this. Will I keep it? Since I already bought it, I'm probably gonna keep this. The main thing I use this for is the motion time lapse. It is an incredibly powerful tool. I've only used it twice now. But I'd like to get more time lapses in, and I think the motion time lapse, not only do time lapses show you something in time, I think this showing it in motion in time is one of the coolest things about this. It also has a tracking feature, kind of like the DJI Spark that I use, where if you track somebody, you can like drag a box over them and it'll follow them. It doesn't work very well, that's why I didn't even bother to show it, because I didn't even bother to show it because why waste your time? It does not work very well. Well, hey everybody, I'm the Everyday Dad. Thanks for watching Reviewing the Cheapest. The main reason I do these is because I just love reviewing the cheapest. It's so much fun to check out this cheap tech and share it with you guys because there are some gems out there. There are some gems out there. Unfortunately, we're having trouble finding them. Well, hey, everybody, if this is your first time here, click that subscribe button down below. On this channel, we mainly focus on vlogging, tech reviews, all sorts of good stuff. I have a lot of fun with this channel. We do daily content now. Definitely click the subscribe button. Once you click that subscribe button, click the bell notification icon right next to it, or you could miss out on some of the awesome things we got going on here in the channel like the gimbal here. Half the fun of having a gimbal is just doing this and seeing the phone stay still. Look at that. I just think that's a lot of fun. It's now distracting me. Hey everybody, I'm the Everyday Dad. If I can figure out that this may not be the best to go with the iPhone 7, you can figure it out. Thanks for watching.